servant. I beg your pardon, were you invited? Oh, Mr. Ormond. How sweet of you. That's all right, Larry. I'm so glad you came. Paul. Good evening. You fool, why did you come? Love, it sometimes blinds me. After what I've been through today, he'll see you now and there's no telling what he'll do. Who, your husband? Yes. How many times have I told you what I've been through this past year? My life isn't my own. He suspects us constantly. The mere mention of your name and he, he raves like a madman. Oh, what a pity. Recurrent lunacy must be quite a strain on you. Pathetic. Paul, this is no time to joke. Please, you must go. Look, I've arranged everything perfectly for us. And now you're going to ruin it. Everything. Everything I've done. You are so completely bewildered that you haven't even asked me how the opening was. I opened the plate tonight, if you remember. Oh, forgive me. How was it? A smash went like a house afire. And you? At my best. I'm so glad. Thank you. Please go, Paul. I'll be in town tomorrow at 10 o'clock to see you. Oh, you will? Certainly, as we planned. You little two-faced liar. Paul, you're mad. You'll see me tomorrow, eh? No, my dear. You will not see me tomorrow or ever again as long as you live. Unless you buy a ticket at the box office. I'm saying goodbye forever. You came out here to say goodbye to me? No. I came out here to plead with you. To hold you, kiss you, fall at your feet. You've evidently changed your mind. Yes, when I heard you lie again. Do you know what it is to look into a woman's eyes when she's lying? Forgive me. I should be more tolerant with a liar. I have been one myself so often. We'll part without any further argument, quietly and calmly. I know everything. You're going with him tomorrow at nine on a plane to Canada, to Aunt Moose. Oh, so that's the point. You did not tell him you were through with him as you said you were going to this afternoon. You did not tell him you loved me, no. Instead, you put your arms around your dear husband and said, Yes, darling, I'll go with you anywhere. I am your good and loyal wife. I love only you, nobody else. <laughs> Paul, please, you must go. John, look who dropped in. Hello, Mr. Ormond. Glad to see you. How are you, sir? I didn't know you were expecting the celebrated Mr. Ormond tonight. Oh, I didn't tell you, dear, but I was, really. In a way, I mean. Well, you see, Paul opened in a new show tonight. Oh, yes. So the new show is a flop, eh? <laughs> no, on the contrary, it was a magnificent success. I'm spending the weekend a few miles from here, so I just dropped in to wish you happy hunting. In Canada, isn't it? Yes. I do all my hunting in Canada. Oh, whoa there! Not so fast. Will you have a drink, Miss Dorman? No, thank you. Ethel? No. Don't you think you're having too many, dear? Frankly, no. And you're mixing your drinks, too. Please, John. That's the way I like my drinks, mixed. Keeps me interested in drinking. Otherwise, I get bored. Sure you won't have one? No, thanks. I have other remedies for boredom. I imagine. Well, I'm sorry I cannot stay for your party. So I'll say goodbye and a very pleasant trip to both of you. Well, uh, you're wasting one of your goodbyes, Mr. Orman. My wife isn't going with me. She insists on staying behind. <laughs> <laughs> That's old Charlie Anderson. I must speak to him before he gets too tight. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Go to the lodge at the end of the garden. Be careful. I'll be there immediately. I adore you.
forgive me for doubting you. Certainly. Do you love me? Oh, yes, of course I do. But, darling, we haven't much time. What do you mean, you have the rest of your life? But, Paul... Oh, calm, please, sit down. You know I learned something tonight? I learned how much I love you. You told me that a year ago. And you let me go. You let me marry him. You never even phoned. I know. If you'd asked me to forgive you... I was stupid. I didn't know then that love was anything more than a good scene, a charming scene. I didn't know it was something that... that could tear at your heart and burn through the grease paint. You feel that way? And you? My darling, I know what you've been doing. You've been telling me lies and telling him lies. I know. I've done it myself too often. But that is over for both of us. What do you mean? You're coming along with me tomorrow. Brazil. You can wire him. We'll stay there until he gives you a divorce. And then, then we'll get married. Married? You? Yes, me. I need you. I realize that today. I need you and I've got to pay for you. You frighten me. But you, you love me enough. Oh, yes, darling. I'll call you in the morning, right after he leaves. But if you love me so much, why were you so frightened in the house? He's very curious when he's drinking. I didn't want anything to happen to you. Why? I couldn't stand there. I couldn't live without you. I couldn't. Mary Hill, 7564, please. Who are you calling? Mr. Webb, my manager. Why him now? Got little news for him. He's waiting at my apartment. What news, Paul? Kiss me. I told you. Madly, stupidly, blindly. Hello, Oliver? Yes, it's me. Never mind where I am. Pay attention, please, and no arguments. I want you to close the play. I said close the play. Yes, padlock the theater. I'm leaving tomorrow for six months. Paul, close a hit. Darling, you're worth a thousand hits. I hope. <laughs> Oliver? No, no. I'm in my right mind. In fact, for the first time since I was born. Do what I tell you. But it's my show, my money, my theater. Close them. All right, pay everybody off. And get me two tickets to Rio on the Clipper for tomorrow. That's right. I'm a little amazed at myself. Did I sound very naive? No. Well, that's the way it goes. Always acting until you find something you can believe in. He's becoming a bore. Too many drunks. I was looking for you. Uh, we were just talking over Paul's new play. It was so noisy in there. Yes, yeah, so I imagine. I wondered if you had changed your mind. About what? Canada. Coming with me. Oh, no. I'm afraid not, dear. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't see how you could resist it. Best shooting in the world if you're looking for moose. Have you ever hunted moose, Mr. Orman? No, I haven't. Maybe... You'd like to come with me. John, you're drunk, please. Now, don't exaggerate. I never get drunk. I get involved, but not drunk. I'll let you use my favorite gun, Mr. Orman. Let me show you my collection. One of the best, you know. There it is. It took me years to gather this, and here. Here is my favorite. Never failed. Here he is, Colonel Johnson. Colonel Hoyer. Oh. Well, I, I was just going. Nonsense. Always wanted to talk to you. Don't mind if I spruce the Colonel up a bit, do you? Please don't point a gun in the house. Don't worry. The Colonel's not loaded. I may be a trifle, but not the Colonel. Three years ago, I got an elk. There he is. Last year, I shot over three moose. The Colonel was only a captain then. I promoted him after the third moose. What did you want to talk to me about? Oh, a lot of things. But we begin with guns. 
They're my hobby. Oh, I don't think Paul is interested in guns. Oh, yes, guns have a certain interest. When in the hands of experts. Exactly. A man would be a nitwit not to be interested in a weapon like this. By George, a blind man could hit a duck's eye at a hundred paces with the Colonel. <laughs> Good old Colonel. You remember that fellow up there? <laughs> Ethel, you don't know where I put that oil can, do you? John, we've got to get back to the house. They'll be missing us. What? I guess miss us? Not a chance. They're having a wonderful time. What did you want to say about guns, Mr. Holloway? Ever use them? Yes. On the stage. Shoot them? On the stage. Not real bullets? No. <laughs> Just blanks, eh? Yes. Only blanks. We actors prefer them. Oh, this is silly, John. Paul's given an opening performance and he's probably exhausted. Darling, you haven't danced with me yet this evening. Come on, won't you? <laughs> I noticed that. It's too late now. Oh, for heaven's sake, will you stop puttering with that gun? I'm getting very angry. Why don't you go, Ethel? Perhaps your husband would prefer talking to me alone. Oh, no, no, no. I have no secrets for my wife. She may have for me. You know how women are. There's always half of them missing. But with men, they're usually in one piece, full of truth and honor. Yes, those things come with age. Thank you, that was well put. I suppose a nectar can get along without much truth and honor. Oh, yes. A nectar can get along without anything, except a good play. Sorry I missed your show. I understand you get killed in it. Yes, at the end of the last act. Couldn't make up their minds, eh? <laughs> no, it isn't that. They could not afford to kill me earlier. It would have been bad for the play. I see. I understand a woman shoots you. Yes, the woman I love. Sounds very dramatic. John! I don't want any interruptions. How do you act when she points the gun at you? Afraid? No. A little sad, but resigned. I'm drinking a highball. Have one? No, thanks. I can't bear to see you drunk like this. You promised me to... I'm not boring you, Mr. Holman. No, not at all. You stand right up to her and don't act afraid, eh? Why is that? Don't sound real to me. Well, what would you suggest I do? A fellow always acts afraid when he's facing a gun. Oh, but an actor without courage would be a flop. The audience always likes courage. <laughs> now, you think of your audience, eh, when you're acting. Always. That's something I could never understand about Ethel. I could never figure out whether she meant something or was just acting it. Kept me guessing for a year. Marriage is no fun when it turns into a guessing contest. All right. There you are, Colonel. All spruced up neat and clean and ready to go hunting. John! You took, you took quite a long time about it, Mr. Holloway. I was getting very nervous. Excuse me. It was an accident. Was it? You saw it, Ethel. I was cleaning the gun. It went off. I didn't think it was loaded. You've killed him. What are you going to do? They'll come here. The police. They'll arrest you. They'll take you away. Oh, John, why did you do it? I can't bear it. This'll ruin you. Both of us. Why did you do it? It was an accident. I was cleaning my gun. You saw it. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. It was an accident. You can tell the police that it was unintentional that your husband and I were the best of friends. Yes, of course. I'll tell them that. I'll say that. John, call a doctor, please. No. No. It's too late for a doctor. The curtain is coming down. It's the end of Act Three. Is that ending? No, no, we'll call a doctor. Oh, darling, I didn't know. I've been stupid and horrible. 
I made you do this. He did nothing. It was an accident. It might happen to anyone. I'll call the servants. You'll be my witness. Yes. To the end. Good girl. All right. I'll call him. <laughs> Don't bother. I'm all right. Paul, you, you're not hurt. Thank heaven. How do you like it, Mr. Halloween? Like what? My performance. Couldn't resist it. <laughs> you know, best scenes have been my specialty since I became famous. So when anybody shoots me, I fall dead. You were acting? Uh-huh. Oh, it's an off night for a colonel. He's not a wizard you made him out. Missed me by a mile. I hope you have better luck in Canada, Mr. Holloway. Oh, now, don't feel so depressed. You know, I wouldn't look too good up there, on a plaque. You were acting? Yes, your husband put it into my head, complaining about you, being unable to tell whether you meant anything or were only acting. I thought I would show him a sample of real acting. Paul, he didn't try to shoot you. It was accidental. The only thing accidental about it, my dear, is that he missed me. That was pure accident, not his. The colonels. I'm afraid, sir, you'll have to demote him. Make him a captain again. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't have worried about your wife, Mr. Holloway. Or oh, she may become intoxicated with the wine of romance, but you, you will always be the morning after. You should have asked me about her. Then you would have been saved the embarrassment of trying to murder me. Paul, it's not true. I saw it. It was an accident. You must believe it. Yes. Yes, Mr. Holloway. She meant it, the things you doubted. She meant every word of them. She loves your strong, manly ways in your stalwart bank account. She loves you very devotedly, with her whole simple heart. God bless her. You're not going to do anything about this? Not a thing. Orman, oh, I don't know what to say. Well, when you do, say it to her in the Canadian moonlight. Good night, Mr. Holloway. Good night, Captain. Shot, what's happened? Are you hurt bad, Mr. Armand? Who did it? Why, you're soaked. Can you listen to you talk, Mr. Armand? Yes, yes, stop yelling. Oh. They shot you. Yeah, it's part of my new suit. Finest suit I ever had. It's my fault. I put it on the wrong dummy. I'll get a doctor. No, no. St. Luke's Hospital. Step on it. Remember. An accident. No publicity. I don't want you to spoil my scene. <laughs> I was superb. And that guy said this suit would bring you good luck. Uh, perhaps it has. <laughs> <laughs> 